Glenn, welcome to the podcast. Cheers, Gary. How are you? I am good. We had a little bit of a quick intro there off, yeah. off, off mic. Um, mm -hmm. Give everyone a kind of quick overview of who you are. Yeah, so basically, um, the Startup Accountant, um, I'll give you the one-liner first. The Startup Accountant is a platform that uses kind of modern forms of communication to add value and support to startup businesses kind of when they need it most. So podcasts, Instagram, webinars, Skype, Zoom. That's kind of what the, the Startup Accountant is about. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is um, the Startup Accountant, is, it's empowered by Cronin and Company, um, an accountancy practice in Terra Nura with over 40 years experience. So the idea behind it is that what we felt was startup businesses and startup companies, I suppose, view accountants, solicitors, bankers, you know, that kind of stuffy, gray suit wearing, briefcase carrying kind of accountant. And there's kind of an intimidation about it. So we decided to kind of put a platform in place and um, that kind of is more a uh, softer approach, less intimidating. And it's evolved into what it is now. And basically, I think Instagram is probably what most people, how most people communicate with us um, to, with the Startup Accountant. Obviously, we do our workshops and we do our, our podcasts as well. But I think we definitely, I don't know, just roll a uh, snowball into just Instagram being the, the platform we use to communicate with a lot of our, um, a lot of our followers and a lot of our clients. Um, as well, but that is obviously the beauty of it is that we're having that, that resources of Cronin the company and all the expertise that goes with it. You've got the startup accountant, which is spearheaded by I suppose, three, what I consider unbelievable people in the form of J.R., Elaine and Phil. And what you get then when you kind of, um, I suppose, get in touch with the startup accountant, you get their expertise, their skill sets, um, their, I suppose, love for dealing with startups. And... We found that over the last six to nine months that that's definitely a platform to start up like communicating with us. Yeah, it's very smart. Um, you kind mm. of, yeah, you, you kind of exploded onto the scene about was six or nine months ago mm. just because you were doing things differently. Like you were popping up everywhere. I just kept seeing you guys, your name popping up everywhere mm. because you were where no other accountants were. I think that's well, I think, super yeah, I, I think what we, we'd spent, like the practice is built. I'm, I'm with the practice 20 years. I'm here since I'm a, a spotty teenager. and the practice was built on working with small businesses, one man bands to, you know, where they are today. Mm -hmm. I think about 12 months ago, we kind of sat down as a group and we were like, you know, we noticed that we, I think what happened was we were part of the national start of awards back in 2018. That was the first time sponsoring it. And you got like a room full of startups that didn't really want to talk to us because they just see in the kind of the shirts and toys and the briefcases and, you know, they're going to be expensive. They're not going to want to help a startup, but That's it. we it's were kind of, yeah. And we were kind of talking going like, that's not us, but how do we do it without coming across we're trying to sell something? And it just snowballed, really, from just sitting down. And I think one day we just said, why don't we just try using Instagram and podcasts? You know, and it's like, it kind of, you were kind of following people like yourself and there's other people who are kind of going, look, there's definitely um, a medium out there or a platform to go at. So we just started nice and slow, no real expectations. And it's funny that when you actually want to help, when you want to help people and give people advice and not look for something in return, which is exactly what we're trying to do, and people find that funny to hear that, um, you end up gaining attraction and, you know, you get, you get follows, you get people communicating with you. We got to a point where we only had 100 followers, but we were communicating with at least 50% of them. Mm. And there's actually an enjoyment in doing it as well. And that's the beauty of the in Instagram, I think, that, you know, you can, someone can ask me a question, I can respond to them straight away. And um, you build up that relationship, that communication. And, um, you know, a lot of the questions we get in, like if people are followers on our Instagram, they're relatively, what we say is if you can Google the answer, we're going to give it to you. You know, we're not, all we're trying to do is break it down to plain English because you we well, know what it, it's, it's a tough mm. medium. And I think that's mm. part of the beauty of what you guys do. You make things so succinct because they have to be, they have to be literally mm. within an Instagram. Yeah. Comments even often. I think there's a massive beauty in that, being able to break something down complex into simplicity. I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. I know I do, is that something can be very complex and obtuse and you can Google it, but still not really get it. You guys are able to boil it down to often a sentence sometimes. Yeah. And I think what happens is when people realize that, we try to get it down to a sentence. If it's going to take a little bit more, we ask them to DM us or get in touch or we set up a call, and they do. Um, it, uh, it's taken a while for people to realize that we're not going to try, we're not looking to charge them, we're not looking for something out of it. Mm. And again, a five minute come, like me talking to someone for five minutes can be the difference between them going into business or not. 
Yeah. And that's huge. And nine times out of 10, all we're really doing is they've got some unsolicited advice or somewhere else, or they've overheard something or misinterpreted something. And us breaking it down into maybe plain English and giving it a bit of substance, letting them know that there's actually someone here that will support them. If that can be the difference to why they went to business, then we've achieved our goal. And that is the goal of the Startup Accountant, to make sure that people that are on the fence, that are not sure, a little bit nervous, that we can give them that helping hand and guide them and break it down for them to let them know that it's, it's the, the biggest challenge is coming up with the idea and being brave enough to do it. After that, just processes in place. Yeah. you know and it's that's trying not to, mm. i think that's why i want to chat to you today especially considering the madness that we're going through now mm. is to chat to you and kind of break things down because it's so much noise we were chatting there off air about there's so much noise there's so much so many articles on social media and this and that and you should be doing this and you should be doing that that's why i want to chat to you because you guys mm-hmm. are really good at breaking down the complex to the simple and going right we're in the middle of this what should businesses be doing and then mm. at the end i think we'll wrap up for kind of aspiring entrepreneurs or people who are like oh you know what i've waited yeah. too long for this now's the time now's the opportunity yeah mm. so like what what have you guys noticed in the last i suppose eight nine weeks like what what's what's been the kind of trends you've seen yeah well i think what we've noticed since this all started around you know okay it's been with us probably since the start of the year but it definitely was sort of start of march when it kind of really hit home in ireland and um, we've kind of seen three phases that have um, a lot of our, a lot of small businesses, a lot, a lot all businesses have experienced, but especially small businesses um, and that have led to new trends. So the three phases we've seen are kind of, initially there was the panic phase. And I think that came when we realized there was going to be schools shutting down, crashes closing, certain sectors. And um, when the government were saying about different, I suppose, schemes and different subsidy schemes, um, temporary layoff, COVID-19 payments. So there was all this panic for two or three weeks where nobody really knew what was going on. The government really didn't know. They were acting so fast, they'd bring things in and they couldn't foresee every possible um, permutation. So there was definitely that panic phase. I think then what happened two or three weeks in, everyone realized they're in the same boat. Everyone realized there was no sector that wasn't getting affected by it. So we had that kind of reflection phase, reflection phase or pivot phase where, okay, Here's the hand we've been dealt with. I can open now, but under a restriction. How can I change my business, even just stay alive and stay relevant? Not necessarily make money, but make sure I can keep the doors open and uh, money coming in. And now we've reached that phase of, I suppose, the realization phase that what is with us now is here with us for a long time. And through these three phases, there's been a lot of trends and a lot of good things have come of it. And a lot of it's around technology. Um, And I think the one thing we see, I think everyone is seeing the, I think it is going to be a game changer is I don't know why half the country drive to work at nine o'clock in the morning, because I think we now realize no one needs to be at a desk at nine o'clock. Crazy. There's certain jobs that you need to be there to open the doors or serve customers or fulfill your role. But 50% of people are just driving in for nine o'clock for no reason. So the whole remote working, embracing technology and how to work remotely is definitely um, a trend we've seen. Also what we've seen as well is the use of kind of other technologies that, I always say to people, like, there's technology is there, I suppose, not to solve the problem, but improve and make your process more efficient. So people are now using technologies and apps that are, were always there, but they, they never used them before. Or you're embracing them now. And then we've got the kind of whole um, contactless world now that um, I think we've spoken for years about, you know, how cash will eventually leave or leave, they come out of circulation. I think now you're going to see it a lot that people that never, you know, paid contactless use their phone to make payments or use their phone to open doors or you know we basically use their phone for every walk of life are now embracing that i think the other that's, trend at that stage do you think or are people very wedded to cash there's a lot of kind of the gray economy get paid in cash and stuff like that that's the area yeah. i struggle to imagine transitioning over but i think what's happened now over the last few weeks that to, to, for their own protection they have to now yeah. to avoid kind of you know um interacting or you know to, to adhere to the social distancing that they're paying for things either online or they're going in to buy a coffee or their supermarket and they're tapping as they go so they're, they're just embracing technology yeah. that is already there so i agree with you i don't think it'll got eradicate immediately but we're talking to a lot of businesses kind of in kind of retail and they're noticing as well the drop in cash is unbelievable that's probably got to do a lot as well that a lot of people who are out of work at the moment and receiving the subsidy payments are getting them paid straight into their bank Okay. Um, I think you could have probably recently maybe had the option of maybe going to the post office or getting paid into the bank, but 
people are now just getting paid their money into the bank. So there is a lot less cash and circulation. But I do believe that it's not going to go away. But I think people who are maybe fearful of using kind of tap and go or using their phone are going to embrace that. Yeah. Um, I also think then the other trend we're seeing is actually the customer experience. People that would never have shopped online are shopping online. People that would never have, you know, and went online to even order something, maybe a delivery takeaway would still rang up or maybe drop down and collected themselves. Yeah. So how we even interact, um, how we get food delivered, um, drink delivered, clothes delivered, that's all going to be embraced now. So I think if you look at someone like um, like Jim Plus Coffee Model is probably a great example of, they, they, they had kind of pop-up stores to kind of have their brand visual, you know, so people would see it. But their model was shop online. And I can guarantee now that... It, a lot of people will just start buying all their clothes online. Um, I've even noticed myself, sure, you know, over the last month or so, you're sitting at home with the laptop and already you go into the, the rabbit hole that is Amazon and before you notice that you've ordered a home gym for your back garden. <laughs> you never needed before. But like, I think that's the way it's going to go. The other trends we're seeing and businesses are adapting to that. They're now realizing, okay, I've got a customer or a consumer now that is going to buy online or going to order online. Um, even down to your local shop, your local supermarket, they're they're gonna they're gonna deliver groceries to me now. I don't need to drop in on my way home. I will place the order and they'll drop it drop it into me. So, I think that's where it's going, and that's where we've seen the trends over the last few weeks. Mm, I agree with you 100. percent I think it, it mm. takes a, a mindset shift often to be forced on people. Mm, exactly. Yeah. You don't take cash anymore. Oh, fair mm. enough. There's a cat. Yeah. There's a cafe in town, Bear Market, and mm. I just go in there for my coffee. And it's cash. It's a uh, contactless only. Mm. There's no cash. And yeah, it's it's brilliant. Talk. It makes a lot, and it does make it makes the thing. I've had the same ten euro sitting in my wallet for four weeks now because, <laughs> well, I'm not really buying anything anyway, apart from a coffee every day. But because you're just again, I got into the habit of using my phone yeah. to pay. I don't even bring my wallet with me anymore. That's the wow. thing. I'm just the cards are on my phone. I tap and go. The tap limits have been increased, and again, you just embrace it. And now it becomes the norm. I I now go for a coffee. I don't even bring my wallet with me. So and far more convenient uh, as well. It's, it is, yeah. It's gotten so much easier. Um, I think, mm. yeah, I think you're right. People who were a little bit hesitant um, mm. will now kind of go, oh, actually, that was pretty easy. I don't mm. need to worry about it. Um, yeah. So for businesses, so they're the trends. So for mm. businesses that are currently in operation and are in mm. shutdown mode, what should they be doing? You know, from a professional point of view, they're probably taking hard steps already, but, you know, if they haven't, what should they be doing to kind of keep, things steady. okay there's, there's one thing that look we always recommend at the startup accountant and it's it's the the go-to tool i think for any business and it's doing a cash flow and now is more important than ever so we look we always say a cash flow three months in advance is definitely important at any stage of your business but especially now okay so you can there's no point in probably projecting any further than that but if you do a three month uh, projection and every week update it and evolve with it what you'll see is that it will take, it will remove a lot of anxiety. A lot of people worry about, well, where will I be in two months time? How will I survive? How will I pay wages? Should I, should I spend money on a website now? Should I try and pivot towards a, you know, an e-commerce business? Well, do your cash flow and see what money is coming in, what money is going out and make decisions on that basis. Don't make decisions based on your gut. The cash flow will tell you a lot of information. The other thing the cash flow will do as well is, and we would, we've been advising people throughout this uh, process, the COVID-19 process, to do a home cash flow as well. What you'll find is that you, you, there's a lot of small items that you pay for each month or week that you don't need. Mm -hmm. So if you've made a decision that you want to spend a certain amount of money or you want to maybe retain staff or you want to do X, Y, or Z, do the cash flow to see, well, by spending that money and by cutting back on other things, where will I be in 12 weeks or 13 weeks? What money is likely to come in? Every penny, whether it's a subsidy scheme, which we'll talk about later on, whether it's you know an old debtor, whether it's money you're going to generate by operating at a fifty percent um fifty percent basis, the cash flow will answer a lot of the questions for you and remove that anxiety. So I can't stress that enough that at this moment in time now, if you've not done a cash flow for the uh, you know for three months in advance, that it, it evolves every week. You know you you tailor it. Would, you know you might project that next week X amount is going to come in. And why leaves the account? Well, that might change for one reason or another. And then you just keep updating your cash flow. So that's the most important thing to be doing at the moment. I think the next thing is communication. Communication is key. Okay. A lot of people, again, I'll probably use the word stress or the, the word stress and anxiety a lot because that's what people are facing at the moment. 
worried about what will the bank say, what will my landlord say, what are the revenue going to do, what will employees communicate with all your stakeholders. Anyone that has an interest or an impact in your business, talk to them. You'll probably find that anything you're worried about, there is a, there's a plan or there's, a, uh, there's something in place that you can implement that will remove all that. So communicate with your landlord, with revenue, with your banks. Don't bury your head in the sand. You'll probably find that you'll have this sense of relief when you do that. And thirdly, is only pay, at the moment, only pay what you have to, okay? You're going to need cash at the end of it. You're going to need as much money in the bank. Majority of your creditors are probably doing some sort of deferment, or I'm not saying they're writing off any balances, but definitely with your landlord, your trade creditors, um, your bank's um, revenue, there's probably systems or there's probably um, processes there that they'll allow you maybe park debt for a while, park um, money owed, or work with you on a basis that will allow you then not to get rid of all your cash. I'll, I'll give you an example, like revenue at the moment, and we'll talk about revenue again later on, but revenue have been very helpful to people. Like they've actually kind of said, look, file your returns. There'll be no interest and penalties on the actual non-payment of returns. And I'll go into that in detail in a few minutes, but definitely, make sure i'm not saying you're not going to have to pay that money but definitely make sure that you're not putting out money that you don't have to at the moment okay so that's only pay what you have to and then the fourth thing i think what people should be doing at the moment and i only talked to someone yesterday who's not availing of it is availing of the government and um, COVID 19 payments whether that's the unemployment temporary layoff payment or the subsidy scheme that's okay? what chat to you about because i think a lot mm. of people are still waiting to, to mm. buy, which is kind of bonkers so maybe just well, I think, that really simple yeah i think the waiting around uh, i think now this is where the panic set in i suppose a few weeks ago when people weren't sure what to do and there's definitely flaws in what the government introduced in both payments and i'll come to that but the subsidy scheme is there basically where the government will give 70 percent of the net pay to a certain to a certain threshold and i won't get into the thresholds but the support there from the government. I think the reason why people were put off by it because of a lot of commentary and correct commentary around it that there was holes in this and potentially if you weren't entitled to it um, and the revenue found that you availed of it and you hadn't met the criteria that you potentially would have to pay it back. I think as the weeks have went on and uh, there was more communication coming from the government, really if your business is down by 25%, you're more than likely able, there's other criteria, but they're more than likely able to avail a 70% scheme. Worst case scenario, revenue will ask for it back. So it can be seen as a form of, of a cash flow for the business at the moment, because you might know whether you need it or not. You could avail of it now and maybe your business doesn't suffer. So you can always, it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's self-assessment a little bit. You can go back to revenue and pay the money back. It'd so be hard to I, many businesses that wouldn't be hit by this. So. Exactly. So I would think that they introduced two measures. There's a temporary layoff, which, you know, if, you, if your business was shut and you had no way of, you know, paying your staff, you could temporarily lay them off and they received the, the, the 350 per week. Or there was a subsidy scheme for if you could, even if you were shut, we could maybe still contribute to the employee's wages if you had the reserves there or if you were trading at a reduced capacity that the government would give 70%. I think the other reason the fear around this is as well, and I think again it's uh, it's coming it's in the media now is that although the payments both payments are non taxable at the moment, they will be subject to tax at a later stage, and I think that's what I think as well with the subsidy scheme was employers felt that they were still just now the responsibility on them that they didn't understand what it was, so they didn't want to sign up to it, and rightly so, you know if an employee receives. Um, a payment from their employer or part of the subsidy scheme and exactly what it was wasn't communicated communicated correctly to them and they find out in a you know a couple of months time that this is subject to tax the employer would have felt well the responsibility was on them so a lot of employers took the i suppose the easier of the two options look I'm, I, i've shut my business is not trading anymore temporary layoff raw staff and don't get to 350 mm. so they're the two schemes available i would but i would definitely think that if you are trading and uh, even a reduced capacity, you should be availing of the 70% scheme. And if you're not trading and you have to let your staff go, then make sure they're availing of the temporary um, layoff and get the 350. Um, because there's probably no point in you trying to pay that money yourself or keep people on the payroll when there's no money coming in because you're not doing a, a service to the rest of your stakeholders. You know, we need to make sure your business is still able to open back up at the other end. 
So it's, you know, if you've got other creditors and you're using all your reserves just to pay salaries at the moment, that's not, not, not necessarily in the benefit of all the stakeholders in the business. I think so, that's solid advice, even just to hear mm, from someone like yourself. That's mm, the clearest I've heard it broken down. Is mm, that it's that that's fear thing. You just don't know. It's just fear. Look, I there's no doubt about it. Lane, uh, you know, who looks after kind of the payroll side of it and the startup accountant, it, the first two or three weeks is a nightmare because in fairness to the government, they can only they're introducing so quickly, the message they wanted to get out was there's cash in circulation. That's, that's all they wanted. It was super fast to be fair. Super fast. And Pascal don't know who came in and said it. It's full of holes, but our mandate is put money in people's pockets. Yes, that was key. Um, and, and unfortunately it, then, yeah, and then it worked. And unfortunately then what we had to then break down for our clients was then, you know, what is the implications? Um, which one should they go with? Which one's more beneficial for their business? And which one will, um, and what, how do, and how do you implement it as well? And when you, like, for example, I got a call last week, you know, because it's starting now. Employees are now not only receiving 70%, but they're actually getting taxed back because of the way the process of how the subsidy scheme has been implemented, it's, it's a net payment. There's no, it's non-taxable at the moment. So what's happening is people who are receiving this non-taxable payment are actually getting taxed back as well because they're not utilizing their tax credits. So people are getting more money. But yeah. what we're trying to say to people, and there's some good commentators out there that are giving good advice, you really should be putting 30% of this money aside. You are gonna have to pay tax on it eventually, okay? There will obviously will be an element of society that will probably never have to do this. But if you're on temporary layoff or you're in, you're in the subsidy scheme, you will be going back on the payroll, hopefully, in 9, 10, 12 weeks' time. Mm -hmm. There will be in ways government are going to collect this. And it will be through your salary. So you're going to find, and this we spoke about this beforehand, that the real impact is not now. It's in six, nine months' time. There will come a point where your salary, your weekly salary, will be reduced because tax credits are gone to cover this payment. Okay. But... I'm going to just to stress that no one knows how it's going to be collected. And that's the other uncertainty. There is no guidelines. We're just being told it will be addressed at a later date. I think the most important thing is just keep going. Keep keep surviving now, like you mm. said at the very start. Keep keep your cash on hand. Keep surviving. Get the money in your pocket. And it'll probably all work out in the end. You know, Rather worry about it in not six to nine months when things are back to 60 70% mm. rather than when you're in the depths of the crisis. Exactly. We live in the moment. And it goes back to what I said, number one. Your cash flow. If you're concerned that you're taking the, you're availing of the 70% scheme, well, then factor in the possibility of maybe having to give it back to revenue. Where will your business be? It could be the difference of keeping the doors open and not open. Mm. You know, the government are asking people to avail of these schemes. That's the thing. Like, although commentators are coming out with the, the pit with the holes in it and there is um, a lot of pitfalls with it, the government's mandate is please, please, please avail of these schemes to ensure that there's money in circulation and staff have money in their pockets because it reduces that panic and fear. Is that so we're saying is, is that just to talk quickly on mistakes mm -hmm. that businesses are making during COVID that you're seeing repeated, mm -hmm. is that the biggest one? Just not availing of stuff that's out there. Not availing of stuff. Yeah, like there's a, there actually is genuinely a lot of government supports out there. Okay. So, but again, how you what, what supports you avail of um determine on your cash flow again. So I'll run through a couple of the supports I would think that businesses should be availing of now. Obviously, number one is the COVID-19 unemployment benefit subsidy scheme. You definitely should be availing one of them. Secondly, things that the government have put in place, and again, it's, it's been advertised on the radio a lot, is the SCBI loans, the Strategic Bank and Corporation of Ireland COVID-19, the Working Capital Scheme loans that are in partnership with um, the government of Ireland. So most of the pillar banks are offering these, AIB, Bank of Ireland, um, Ulster Bank. Basically, there are loans there for businesses who are affected by COVID-19. And we're definitely advising people that, we're not saying people should get into debt, definitely not. But if you do your cash flow and there is a, a support or there's, you know, cash flow um, is important and you can see it run and dry, but you definitely know you can keep your business open, apply for one of these, these loans now. They, they range between 25,000 and 1.5 million. And they're a, they're a really competitive interest rate. You still have to go through the normal process of applying for a loan with the bank, providing cash flow, providing figures, showing what the money is for, but definitely avail or look into them options while it's there, okay? So you've got the SCBI loans. On a smaller level, there's also Microfinance Ireland, who we really support here at Startup Accountant. They do, they do business loans up to 25,000, but now have increased that to 50,000 for businesses through COVID-19. That's probably more realistic for small businesses than maybe the SCBI loans because 
Microfinance Ireland, we've had a lot of clients. My own wife actually used it for one of her businesses with uh, Microfinance Ireland. They really do. They have kind of a mentorship side, side to the business as well. They come out, they give advice. And um, believe it or not, they contacted her week one through this to actually see that she wants to avail of a six-month moratorium. Oh, wow. Unlike having to approach the pillar banks, like Microfinance Ireland were unbelievable. She said no at the time. They then came back to her three weeks later to say, hey, look, you know, it's the start of April. Are you sure? And actually things had evolved in them three weeks. So she did want to avail, avail of it, but they really there to support businesses. So if you, again, are looking for some working capital and you feel that, you know, once you get to the other side, you can resume to normal trading or you've pivoted your business to a way that you definitely know that there's a long-term future in it, availing of maybe something like Microfinance Ireland is a really good option. Other supports there for people that uh, they're not evading of, so putting aside the, the two kind of, I suppose, the, the loans, is definitely your local enterprise office. I can't stress that enough again as well, that um, the local enterprise office, Leo, are really supportive of small businesses. At the moment, they've got two really good vouchers that people should be availing of. Um, there's a business continuity voucher for €2,500, up to €2,500, which gives you, um, you can you use to then get advice on how you can get your business through COVID-19. And then there's also the trading online voucher for businesses that have never even thought about going online. I know want to maybe put a website in place or an e-commerce platform in place. But again, there's a voucher there to be available. Of. And without saying it's free money, but that's what it is. If you it's really are local, I think it's a brilliant scheme. Mm, People like it really is. We've talked about there about the trends with mm. e-commerce. I think there's going to be. It's like I was talking to someone about this the other day. It's like remember when there was phones and smartphones. Mm. I think it's going to be just. It's not mm. going to be commerce and e-commerce. It's just going to be commerce. Everything yeah. is going to be e-commerce. Mm. Everything That's it. Online. You're right. Deadly. From your baker mm. to your pharmacy. It's just going to be online. And all mm. I think there's massive opportunities in all these areas whereby how do you grease those wheels? How do you become mm. a, a cog in those wheels of, of mm. making that happen? Because a lot of these are traditional businesses who just have a shop down the local village. Mm. How they don't have a clue how to get Shopify, you know. So yeah. I think vouchers like that are huge. I don't think. And I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said it. Like a butchers is what I think about all the time now. Yeah. Is at the moment or your local fruit and veg store because they actually are one of the very few businesses that are probably the doors are open and are doing quite well at the moment. But they're going to have to embrace what we spoke about earlier on the the new trends, people contactless payment, ordering online, delivery. You know, people are going to want their place their order online, have their meat delivered at the end of the week. You know, never meet the butcher. You know, that's, so that's a business that we're kind of advising should be available at these local enterprise vouchers. Mm -hmm. Like, it's free money there. They want to support you. Like, if you ring your Leo office, they will want to give you assistance. They will want to point you in the right direction. Are they that's still the operating? kind of support you need them. Yeah, they're still, still operating. Okay. So get on to them. Nice. Again, for then Enterprise Ireland, again, another, okay, obviously maybe there's, a, there's maybe the more the medium to the SME size businesses. But again, they've got grants in place at the moment, um, up to 5,000 euro for financial support. So evading of, if you're a small business, you should be going onto your local enterprise office or Enterprise Ireland's website and seeing what grants and tools are available to you. So as well as the COVID-19 payments, as well as business loans, these are two options here that are effectively free money and free support. Just mm, a um, huge amount of support. You've, you've given a huge list of things. So, far. and the last one I'm going to say, and I think, and I, I'm going to say it because I, people often forget about, but revenue have been very supportive through this whole process in terms of not only for the advice they've been given, but in terms of you know, there's two things they've they've introduced which I feel are very important. There's the e-working tax credit for people that are working at home. They're entitled to three euro twenty a day because they're using their own light and heat and their oh, yeah. electricity. And then also what they've done as well is every year there's a the small benefit exemption that business they usually use around Christmas time, the small gift um, up to 500 euro. Up until now, that's always been a one, you can only have a one-off payment, 500 euro, you couldn't split it. You know, if you, if you give someone a, a, a gift of 250 euro, you couldn't give them another gift, it was 500 euro. Traditionally always used at Christmas time or end of year as, you know, as some sort of um, reward for good work. What they've said now is that that 500 euro can be broken down. So if you have employees that are struggling and a 100 euro gift voucher could make sure they can get their shopping for, the, for a couple of weeks, you can give them a voucher tax-free. So again, just small UPS. Yeah, that. yeah, and there too, we're actually definitely, because someone actually said to me, go, I think we put it up on our Instagram and, and they weren't being smart, but they said, well, who was in a position to be giving their staff, you know, a bonus or a, a gift card? And I said, well, what about someone who knows that their, their employees are struggling to buy groceries? I want to give them a payment, maybe of 100 euro tax free in a gift voucher. 
they said oh, i never thought of it like that and i yeah. said and that's what revenue that's what the trimesters are trying to get out so revenue have been very supportive during these times so i would think there's lots out there but it all stems from doing your cash flow and seeing what you actually need in your business that's the trickle down and then to kind of like kind of end on a positive note i suppose i think a lot of people will i think i i know i'm doing it i think everyone's mm-hmm. doing that i saw a really interesting poll on pat Phelan. The entrepreneur mm-hmm. he put up a poll on Twitter and Instagram the other day, and it's like, Will you go back to your normal life? And a mm-hmm. percent said no. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. I think it's given people a lot of time to kind of reflect on what they were doing. You nailed it there with the with mm-hmm. shooting every day at nine. I think that's mm-hmm. dead. Um, so if people are thinking, you know what, now is my time to start that business, now is the time to mm-hmm. take that shift, take that pivot. I've you know, maybe mm-hmm. I've I've saved up a lot of money or, you know, feck it, I'm just going to go for it. What would you be advising people to kind of do now and kind of how can they start the business in this time, which I know people might think that's a bonkers suggestion Mm. to start in this time, but I think it's a brilliant time. Well, I'm going to come at it two ways. First of all, yes, it's definitely a great time. But what I will say is before we even talk about the people that want to go into business, I want actually people who are currently maybe, especially the ones that are closed altogether that can't trade, to actually look at their business as if they're starting again, okay? Re- think of it as a reset button. My theory is, or you know, especially what we feel at the startup accounting is a lot of businesses that started up maybe three or four years ago, because again, a lot's involved over the last few years, supports in place and how we do business, how we view entrepreneurship, and how we view starting for business. A lot of people set up businesses two or three years ago and they weren't funded correctly, they weren't structured correctly. Take this moment now to go, where are you actually making any money? Or were you just trading on debt, cash flow, stress, anxiety? You, you think of it as a restart button. Think about, look at where you are now and think, if I open back up, let's say we have a magical date that we all go back to normal at the 1st of July or 1st of August. If I open back up, am I just going back into the same problems again, the same stress, the same building up debt? Because now is an opportunity to avail of the insolvency processes that are there. Now is an opportunity to go, or maybe forgiveness, or maybe maybe some sort of write-off. Communicate, like see where exactly where your business was losing money. See, has it the potential to you know increase turnover? Have you have you been able to not see the wood from the trees over the last three years? Do you need to start, look at certain debt and see can you restructure it? And at least then when you open back up, it's funded correctly, the debt restructured restructure correctly. And your business model is there to make money because what happens is how you started your business three years ago kind of has, has, might have taken so many different turns. The business you're running now wasn't the business you wanted to run three years ago. Mm. So if you're in a business now and it is shut for whatever reason, try and see the, the positive. And this isn't a negative point of view. Look at the positive point of view. Go, is there a point of opening back up the doors? And what I suggest is do a little three month, even go from January to when you closed. Did you make any money in them two or three months? Where's what? Get a list of creditors, everyone you owed money to on the date you had to shoot your business there in March. And then factor that into a cash flow of when you're going to open back up and see what the world looks like. And if you're only going to go back into more debt and more robbing Peter to pay Paul and living off cash flow and you know, it's, you're not enjoying it, well, then don't go back in to that business. Restructure it, start again, and go from there. So that's what I'd say to anyone who's currently in a business to think of themselves to start think of it as a, a second another opportunity you've always wanted about to do it all again and do it yeah. now think of it as a reset button the majority of people are going back to the starting line anyway the majority of businesses are going to be starting all over again no point in starting all over again with a, a bundle of debt let's see what's there restructure it maybe use and again we'll go back to like if you've got 20 or 30 thousand of small debt people you owe money to maybe a microfinance or loan structured over a proper um, length of time is key to maybe your business, but a cash flow will tell you that. So that's why I think um, treat it as treat your business if you're starting up. To answer your question, maybe hey, what your startups do now is the perfect opportunity that if you've ever had that ambition to start up your own business, use this time. We always say to people um, that there's kind of five phases in kind of a business life cycle. There's the the seed and development phase, which is what you're in now, and you've got the idea. Your startup phase. You've got then your growth, establishment, then your expansion, and then maturity and exit. So we also feel there's five phases to a business life cycle. The ones we're going to concentrate now are the two phases. First of all, you've got your seed and development. You've got the idea. And um, what should you do? A couple of advices I'd give before 
you even we look at how you start up is I'd actually embrace yourself. You have an idea, I'd embrace yourself, surround yourself with a network of people who are like minded. And something like, well, you know, with myself, yourself, there's James, there's Carl, Sean, David, we kind of meet up regularly. That's when you should be people like that is who you should be discussing your business idea with, not your mate to play football with or the guys down the pub. Because through no fault of their own, you're only going to get unsolicited advice. Yeah, and so they're probably going to tell you a great idea anyway. They don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah, or or they'll pick holes in it, or they might be, you know, they might dampen it, or they, you know, at the the way I look at it is, you've got the idea. Surround yourself with people who are like minded, and I'm not saying you distance yourself from your social life as well, but definitely don't be going and expecting to have that chat about your business idea with someone that doesn't have the same mindset as you, and expect to walk away feeling good about yourself. So definitely start now surrounding yourself with like-minded people and that can like again i think me and you interacted really through a, you know, a common podcast we listen to you know i think mm-hmm. we both follow brian Keane. i got yeah. your name you know three, so start listening to podcasts so put yourself in the surroundings of an entrepreneur a business yeah. mindset that's step one yeah pull okay? the thread on that then and, and it's amazing how interconnected mm-hmm. everything is you know yeah just by connecting with you and connecting with someone else then james mm-hmm. and it, there's just there is a there is a a group of people out there who are doing yeah. a lot of cool things and um, so yeah start connecting with so them. do um, that now now you've got the time to do that so start forming that network like the the phrase that your network is your net worth is so true have that there you'll get so much advice from them people and um, free free advice free experiences like i i love meeting you guys and you know as i say there's always nuggets that come from it that you never thought of before um, or are you looking at it from a different angle? So if you have a business idea, surround yourself with them like-minded people. You might even look at it at a different angle. Then you've got to make the jump into, okay, starting up a business. And this is why the startup accountant uh, was where it comes from, why it exists. is because people, when they go into business, they start thinking of like, there's so much to be thinking of, you know, employees, finance, taxes, revenue, leases, buildings, contracts, you know, and it's, it's scary. It really is. What we say is, break it down into small pieces. So first of all, actually, you've decided you've got the idea, you want to start a business, it's quite simple. You just need three things to run a business in Ireland. You need to have your entity, whether that's a sole trader or a limited company, you open a bank account and you register for taxes. And them three things are so simple. And the amount of people that get in touch with the startup accountant through Instagram or talk to us or myself, Elaine or JR, or feel about how much money do I need to have a company? How much money do I need to start a business? There's no, there's no amount of money. You can have your business set up for three or 400 euro in, in terms of setting up your company with the company's office, opening a bank account and registering for taxes. And then that's, that's the starting point. Then you're ready to go. Um, and so many people get put off by the thoughts of setting up a company, the thoughts of um, you know, dealing with a bank, of filling out forms. But we're in a world now where you know, there is a lot of help and resources there. Okay, you'll always meet someone that doesn't want to help you. You will always be them people out there. But genuinely, if you go into your bank, they will help you complete the bank application form. I'm doing this 20 years. I still don't know how to complete the bank application form. There's always new, but the amount of times I give it down to the guys and I've missed a box or not put a signature there. So don't be put off by that. And then even with revenue, people have this fear about filling the form out wrong. What happens? Are revenue going to come down and shut my business? Embrace revenue. Revenue are there to support people. Revenue are not there to shut down businesses. They're there to stop fraudulent activity, tax evasion. They're not there to take someone's dream and uh, pull it away from them. Okay, if you make a mistake, you make the mistake. You know, treat the revenue like any other overhead in your business, like utilities, like the bank law. It's just another stakeholder you have to deal with. And again, they're human beings at the end of the day that work in the revenue. So even if you don't get the assistance of an accountant or a financial advisor, you can still do these three things yourself. And if you want to fill out the revenue form, pick up the phone and ring them. You will get someone at the end of that line that will assist you, whether it's how to complete the form, what VAT registration, or sorry, what um, VAT rate should I be applying? Should I be cash receipts or invoice basis? Like that's all overwhelming for someone who's starting out in business. Very. That's why we hope that the, I suppose the, the soft approach we take with the Instagram and the podcasts is that we're not, it's not, it's the advice is there online. We're just breaking it down for you. And the, the satisfaction we get seeing someone that had an idea and actually turn it into a business, that's enough for us. If we build a relationship after that, brilliant. That's the bonus, okay? But seeing someone that not get put off because they feel that 
I don't want to deal with that stuffy, intimidating bank or accountant or solicitor or the revenue. Breaking down them fears is what the startup accountant is all about. So I think now is the best time ever to be doing your research, reaching out to people like ourselves and like yourself. And there's loads, there's a good network of people out there that are willing, like lots of James and uh, other people that are in that space that will let, give support for free. Mm. Um, you know, as long as you're genuine and looking to start a business, there's loads of supports out there. Start reaching out to these people. Don't be afraid to ask for help. That's the other thing I'd say to people. Don't one. be afraid. Yeah, that's you the know? thing. People are so good with their time. People mm. generally say yes. Even mm. me asking people to come on the podcast, sometimes I'm like, mm. this owner, they're a bit busy. They're like, yeah, I'd love to. And yeah. Like, they're so open. I think a lot of the problem is people don't ask. People are like, mm. oh, what if they say no? Well, they say no, they say no. It's just, yeah. But as you say, it's how you approach it. It's, you know, go with specific questions. Don't go mm. with broad questions. Mm. How do I start a business? Well, that's mm. fair. You've nailed it there. Get your mm. bank account taxes. Mm. And that, <laughs> I get that question a lot. It's like, how do I start a business? I'm like, well, mm. it's pretty straightforward. You know, just cover mm. these off. Yeah. Then you're not six months down the line trying to untangle mm. this yeah. absolute me- I'm sure you get it the whole time. People come to you six months later going, I started this business, but I kind of didn't didn't uh, check the time yeah. or I'm playing the wrong path. It's a nightmare. It is a nightmare, but what we try to even remind people is you had the idea initially. That's that's the biggest challenge, like, you know, um, or haven't been brave enough. So at the moment, you have the opportunity to probably start your business while maintaining a PAY job or maintaining another business. So I always say, like, people say you should go all in. I'm not so sure about that as a startup because, you know, at the end of the day, there is, we do have a, a real life, you know, mortgage to pay, rent to pay. It's very hard for someone to be committed and go all in on their, I suppose their dream or their side project, but definitely, definitely now is the time to actually have the free time to set it up and research on it, get the information. Um, don't be put off by, you know, don't wait. You'll wait forever. You've had the idea. Just press the button, execute it, and there will be there will be good people around you to support you. And that's the beauty of again technology with Instagram, podcasts, Skype, Zoom. You can interact with people so easily now. You know, um, I say, I, again, the way I used to do networking three or four or five years ago is if you want, if I wanted to meet you, I'd probably be like, where does Gary have his coffee? I'll bump into him, you know, <laughs> you know, or, or where does he play sport or what's he into? Now you just have to like follow him on Instagram or yeah. DM him. It's, like, it's so easy to interact with someone now or open up a, a build a network. So that's what I say to people. Embrace the technologies that are there. I would be someone that, again, a year ago, I had no real desire to be on Instagram, but now that I have a focus of why I'm on it, okay, we all, we all unfortunately spend that error, sometimes errors daily trolling through feeds, but, you know, using it for a purpose, LinkedIn, using it for a specific reason, um, it definitely can help you achieve your goal. I couldn't imagine doing mm. video. I hated doing video calls. Mm. I absolutely hated them. And mm. now I'm like, Jesus, this is brilliant. Well, I can do the podcast from home. I can chat to you. I can get mm. that depth of like, literally we're sitting looking at each other it's amazing but it's like the contactless thing you were saying mm. that little shove going actually mm. not that bad but I, like you say like reach out to literally someone linked in me yesterday messaged me yesterday mm. going, oh i'd love to ask you about you know this thing about property and you know how do i do this and i was like yeah let's do a call or two today and i had a zoom call with him like two or three mm. hours later and and he got the info oh. looking for and we now have a new connection so yeah. just ask i think yeah i think that's great advice just that's the biggest key yeah i definitely think so just ask for advice Glenn, as you kind of look towards, we'll kind of wrap it up now, but as mm-hmm. you kind of look towards the next kind of six months, like what's your kind of feeling on the whole, where we're heading to? I suppose it's very <laughs> asking you I to think, predict the future, but still. I think um, it's going to be tough, okay? And I'd say I don't want to end the end the podcast on a, a negative note, but what, the, what advice I'd give to people is prepare for the worst. Always prepare for the worst. doesn't necessarily mean you have to be pessimistic, but prepare for the worst and more than likely you'll get through this. Don't be naive going into the next few months, okay? Um, don't expect someone else to solve the problem for you. So everything we just discussed on the podcast in terms of like, you know, supports that are available, um, doing your cash flow, uh, communicating with people, that's gonna be so critical over the next six months because nobody knows what's gonna happen. But I think we all know that it's gonna be different and we all don't like different initially. We do adapt very quickly but it's a bit like what happened six weeks ago. The panic was there straight away. So my advice to people is it's going to be different. It's going to be tough. I think we're, we're, only, we're not seeing 
the real um, implications of it now because I know it might sound silly to say, but at the moment, a lot of people are cash rich at the moment because they're obviously, they're, everyone's still getting paid in one form or another due to the government's um, uh, COVID-19 payment and they're not spending any money. So at the moment, that fear is not there yet and everyone's in the same boat. But six, nine months time, all that forgiveness will be gone. Um, the business will start opening up but in a different way. So again, I heard on the radio this morning, like, you know, uh, flights you know they might be only 75 percent full restaurants might be only 50 percent full so you might be opening up into a new world where trading conditions are different don't go into it blind don't go into it naive as i say pay for prepare for the worst and you'll probably do okay that would be my advice for the next six months nine months but give yourself a break as well a little bit because there's no one that knows the answer either like you know there's no one I, we all look i want to get ahead. i want to make sure that we you know when we get out the other side, I'm ahead of everyone. We all want to do that. That's the entrepreneurial streak in us. We all want to be able to maximize the opportunity. But do the basics first, you know, and make sure you're keeping an eye on your business, keeping an eye on your cash flow. That will, that will keep you in good stead on the other side. Well, then on a kind of positive note, I was kind of mm. blown away by your, uh, your organization and how you structure yeah. it. I think that mm. actually will end on a positive because I think that yeah. tools for a lot of people would be very useful now because I think a lot of people are kind of like, never worked from home couldn't mm-hmm. even foresee it a few weeks ago like maybe just break down if you don't mind just share yeah no i think it's uh, it's, I, I, it's, coming, genius. I love it's it. i tell you where it came from and i think we discussed this i i, bet I, I don't read a lot i read some books like everyone i you know audio books or you know you're listening to pod, podcasts i'd rather get my information there but again true i think listening to brian Keane or something like that i came across craig valentine's the perfect day formula and I read that book and it really was a bit of a, a game changer about 12 months ago for me because I hate, I now hate wasting time. And I, I believe that structure is freedom. And I, I really do believe that. And I hate going into a day or a week or a month and having free time. It doesn't necessarily mean I don't waste time, but at least I can analyze and look back and see, right, you know, wh- where, where did the day go wrong? So I actually do break down my day and you see in the calendar I use, I break it down and from the minute I wake up to the minute I go to bed and on a weekly, I plan like daily, weekly, monthly in advance and I do break it down to what I'm doing every hour. I factor in family time, I factor in gym time, I factor in social time, meeting the lads, doing whatever. But at least I know that I'm not wasting time and it removes the anxiety and it lets me know then because I always find you get anxious about things. I find you get anxious when about something that you know you could actually solve by looking at it. Like that's where the anxiousness comes in. And if oh, I have a yeah. structure, yeah. by having a kind of a calendar and structure, you can, you can then go, oh, right, I can, I can get that done or at least tell yourself, well, I just didn't have time to do that. And then what you do is you, priori- you end up prioritizing the most important things. So I do definitely feel that, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're in business, like if you're in business, you have so much to do in terms of, especially if you're on your own taxes, uh, dealing with staff, dealing with creditors, then you've got a family life, then you might have children, then you've got your health, then you've got your social life. I've listed six, seven, eight things there. You know, you can't go in, you can't just expect to throw the balls in the air and get to the end of the week and have achieved all that. You have to have structure. And you, so know, you might get the to- one first. You'll always be like, oh, I'll just, I'll do that, yeah. that easy task. And then that eats up three, four hours. And you're like, mm-hmm. exactly. And then you end up get frustrated with yourself and you start getting annoyed. And that's what happens. So you get into this vicious cycle of not achieving your goals, analyzing things, procrastinating on things, and you just end up doing nothing. And that's why I just think that if I could give one piece of advice to, to anyone, whether, you know, the business owners or whoever's listening to this podcast, is definitely put a structure in place. Now, maybe I'm a bit too gone the other way from reading Craig Valentine's book, but I definitely think having that structure going into a week uh, a day, or sorry, a day, a week, a month in advance, filling your calendar, putting stuff in, it definitely gives you more focus. And it definitely has been a game changer for me since I read that book. Uh, about, perfect day for him. Perfect day for yeah, Craig Valentine. He's got another book as well, and Unstoppable, I think it is. I think that was the second book. Um, obviously, he's on Instagram as well, and he has podcasts. I'm not saying that I get lots from his podcast or his Instagram page, but definitely that book was definitely something that really... I'll link, uh, I'll link it down below and maybe try to yeah. find an article or something that explains it. Yeah, it'd be great. Ben, where can people learn more about the Startup Accountant? 
Yeah, well, look, the, the Startup Accountant, may, our main platform is on our Instagram page. So at Startup Accountant, and we then have a website at startupaccountant.ie and we have a podcast as well. You'll probably see, there's obviously there's four of myself, Elaine, J.R. and Phil. They're the four of us that kind of spearhead the, the Startup Accountant. J.R. would be the famous out of us all. Um, he <laughs> also, so if you start following us online, you'll, 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 you'll know J.R. pretty quickly. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he pops up everywhere and really does. I got but, one um, question yeah. from Instagram actually. I put up that you were guys. <laughs> the only question I got was, How does GR have such great hair? That was yeah, the only well, question I got. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll let him answer that. I'll get him to answer that on the, the daily story today. But um, yeah, the Instagram is probably where you'll get us most. It's a platform we use a lot. Don't hesitate to DM us or ask us for a quick call. It, it, as I said earlier on the podcast, um, a five minute conversation with someone could be the difference whether they're going to sell their business or not. Brilliant, Glenn. Listen, thank you so okay. much. Look after yourself and I'll talk to you Cheers, soon. Cheers, Gary. Talk to you soon. Cheers, Paul.